Okay, so today we're going to do what I like to call shade tree alchemy. And if you uh, don't know what the term shade tree means, when I was growing up, there was two different kinds of mechanics. The guy at the shop, who was horribly expensive, but he had all the fancy tools and they would go do your, they would do your work, or you could go see the shade tree mechanic, who did it underneath the shade of a tree and with a whatever tools he walked up with and could basically do the same thing. So, <clears throat> what we're gonna, this is really designed to get you started with plant medicine and making your own medicine without uh, having a lot of money into equipment and get you started on the road. Um, you're not gonna get the full philosophy out of this and so there's gonna be some things that don't necessarily happen. It's not gonna come out as clean by any means, but in order to get that cleanliness, we need distillation and all kinds of things. Where this is gonna get the basic idea down so we're going to start out with one every, a lot of people ask about, and that's RSO. And this one's a real interesting one because uh, a lot of people know the medicinal values of it. Whereas just the cannabis plant in and of itself uh, doesn't necessarily have all these cures that are associated with RSO. And certainly uh, dabs or extract, that's just the straight spirit, you know, just the straight oil, certainly doesn't have any of that associated with it. But again, we can pick any plant and just taking a plant from getting a book like any of these books. Uh, for me, we go to, I just go down to the used bookstore. You can typically find these type of things for just a couple bucks down at the used bookstore uh, for those home remedy type ones. Or even if you're doing uh, something like uh, making lye, um, you can get all kinds of different formulas and compounds and things. You can get formula books uh, because alchemy isn't just good for medicine. Like I said you can make all kinds of things like activated carbon, lye, all those things. And we'll talk about those when we go to do the nigrato phase. So you just pick your plant material, whatever it is, whatever it is, and break it up. Throw it into a throw it into a mason jar. Those are nice and cheap. And then you go and get yourself some nice grain alcohol. Now this is obviously Everclear and this is going to be your best bet because the cleaner the alcohol or the higher the alcohol content, the less oil that's in it from what they made it out of. So it's able to extract more oil into itself. If it's, or, if it's only a 40% alcohol by volume, uh, which is an 80% which is uh, uh, what? or 40 proof is 80% is 20% 20 20 alcohol you've got 80% of that that's not really pulling out too much so <clears throat> you want to go with as high a proof as you can obviously if you can make your own that's best and this is just corn alcohol um, but that's for later on after you figured out fermentation and distillation and all those things. So this is the way to start. Um, I did try it with one time with uh, some humble vodka because in some places you can't get Everclear. Um, I swear that that stuff was fire retardant when I went to go do the nigrado portion of it. it. It just did not work out well at all. So you're just gonna put your plant material there in the mason jar and then you're just gonna fill it up with fill it up with your Everclear, and then you're gonna let it soak. And that ever and every day you go and shake your jar, and that thing's a real nice time to take as a reminder that while you're doing any of these processes, you need to stop and think about what you're doing. Put your put your thought and your intention into that. Understand what you're doing, and then pay pay strict attention to what's going on in your plants, in your bottle, in your uh, Alembic, no matter what it is, pay attention and look at what's going on. That's where, that's where the philosophy comes from. So <clears throat> every day you're just going to want to shake your jar, mix it up, let that alcohol 
move completely through there and pull out as absolute much, the absolute most oil that it can. Now, with this, you're not, you're pouring in the alcohol, so you're not necessarily getting the fermentation, but you're gonna oxycarbolate, which is just basically putting it under heat at a later point, so that is gonna activate the highest oil, which in this is gonna be THC, and then below that CBD, below that terpenes, everything having three levels of oil. Again, something we're gonna get into after we do the separation. Uh, you don't need much else to do this. This is part of why it's uh, shade tree alchemy. Just some uh, nice pure alcohol. And again, along with that purity, whatever that uh, percentage is of oil that's not alcohol, that's not gonna burn off so much. So you're literally putting that back into your work. So one of the nice things to do is just ferment your own things, then turn around and do it with this. But then if you're already doing fermenting, you can do the full alchemy. So it doesn't matter so much. But then you just need, uh, when we go to separate it, we're just gonna pour it through a, coffee, a brown coffee filter, hopefully organic. Um, you don't want any chemicals in this. Again, you're gonna get a Pyrex dish. That's what you're gonna pour it into. You get a simple hot plate. So when you go to take your solvent, which is your alcohol, the alcohol in this case is the solvent. There are other solvents that you can use and you could use a heat press <coughs> or steam. But this is a simple heat source just for getting the solvent back off. Um, go ahead and point for me. We're gonna work with a few other things and some other solvents. Um, so that way you can see the actual extraction process. I have a nice extractor, which there are cheaper ways to do this also. You can actually take a mason jar and punch two holes in here and a punch a hole in the middle and spray it down and the propellant will come back out. So you wanna be nowhere near, near that with your face. And that'll leave the liquid butane in there and you just dump the the plant in there and then strain it back out but so that way you'll be able to see the actual separation process happening and we'll shoot that in the next one um, or they take like I said a heat press and that'll press out some of the press press it out or you could take steam and steam out the oils like you do with vegetables um, this is why they say uh, <coughs> when you uh, when they boil vegetables, it's taking out all the nutrients. It's not truly taking out the nutrients, it's pulling out the oils. And what we're gonna discover along this process is the oils are the key that makes the salts available. And the salts were your nutrients and the oils, once they left, the salts were no longer bioavailable. And those oils were in the, were in the water. But we're gonna put all those things back together and make all these things useful. So for now, we're going to have our plant material soaking <coughs> and we're going to shake it up every day and we'll come back in about 30 days and start the separation and see what we got.